Welcome to the Monday, March the 7th, 2022 meeting of the Montpelier Design and Review Committee. I will add members and staff. Are you on there? I, I had a big something. Oh, okay. So that people watching from home didn't just see a big pop up in there. We'll let members and staff introduce themselves. Benjamin Cheney, Benjamin Cheney, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Steve Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, member. Liz Pritchett, member. And we may see Eric, but at the moment he's not here. I will let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures and process. All right. Since all of our people on remotely are members, I try and keep this fairly brief. Um, but this will help anybody who's watching via Orca understand how to get on the meeting do uh, here we go all right so for anyone that is viewing tonight's design review committee meeting via orca media you can decide to participate in the meeting um, by getting on via the zoom platform through either video or telephone access options there's this website here that you can type into your browser or you can call into the meeting using this phone number and this meeting ID. Um, if you're trying to do that and you're having problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. My email address is also on the planning department website. Um, and if you do log in via Orca Media, please know that turning on your video is optional. Um, and we do ask that everybody to please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking to reduce background noise. Um, if anybody does log in remotely, I will probably do a brief um, update rundown for them of some of the other Zoom procedures, but our only applicant tonight is here in person and we don't have any members of the public on other than our DRC members. So I'm gonna keep this really short um, again. Please feel free to log on directly using the phone number and meeting ID option or this website and email me if you have any problems. I'm going to hand the meeting back over to Steve. Do I hear a motion from any of the members to approve the agenda? So moved. And I'll second it. This is Martha. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Ben. Yes. Steve. Martha. Okay. Unless anyone has anything else to add at the moment, we can go to the application for the evening for 4 Langdon Street. Come on up. Bent Nails Bistro, come up to the table. And just remember to try and speak into the microphone as closely as you can. I tried to, you can move it maybe closer to the middle if you want. Sure. You don't really need the computer. That's there, so it's easier for you to see people who are on remotely versus trying to see the face screen. Go ahead and describe your amended application for us. Um, amended application is going to include um, hanging art on the river side of the building, as opposed to the front, um, and the new light fixtures. I believe that's fine. Oh, and the, uh, the menu. The menu board sign on the front. Display case. Display case. Yeah, it won't. It doesn't really count as a sign for our sign regulations, um, but it's a, a menu board so they can put their menu out and um, do the occasional flyers for events. But it switches out. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Is the menu board for actual in menu or for events? Uh, it will hold both the uh, the calendar, the monthly calendar for events, and our menu. Okay. And feel free if anybody needs me to share any parts of the updated application um, over Zoom, I can put those up. And as I was reading through the text, the decision 
to remove the awning based on engineering fees? Yeah, I was a little remiss in speaking for her at the last meeting. She did want to get um, some estimates from engineers, and as we suspected, it was just too much. We just got those last week, so that will be coming down, like I yes. said. I'm just waiting for a little uh, less icy weather to put the ladders up there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so the lights are they up now, or are these just proposed? <clears throat> the lights in front of the building, <clears throat> the conduit that's um, shown along the facade. I didn't catch the first are, part of that. Are, the, are, they there? Um, are they? Are the lights already up? Yes, they are already already up. Yes. So, this, so the ones on the very front of the building were there before. Oh, yeah, yeah. The new ones that got put up are the ones just on the corner over the sign and the oh, okay. next to those. So they were here before and got a permit for um, the signs, and the DRC approved and said that they could put in solar pan solar lights there. And the solar lights didn't work, so they installed these other ones with conduit and are coming back now to get approval for those lights. I see. Thank you. Yeah. Could, you could, could you just put a picture up for us to just to refresh our memories? Of course. Thank you. And so the conduit that, all, that was already there when we leased the building is the same conduit that our electrician bought and used to install the, the new lighting. I just didn't have a chance to paint it to the color of the building because of the time of year. So that will take place to hide the conduit from standing out. So this is some of the new conduit here right. that goes up and then goes behind the sign to get up to the lights. Um, and that's the existing. Yeah, this is existing conduit to the lights on either side of the entryway door. It actually goes and goes further over, over the front. Yep. Yeah, because there's a light over this window. Yeah, I'll just that was already I'll there scroll to that. Yeah, so it stopped here, right? right? It yep. stopped at that light. It stopped just... at this light, and they've added this along the same line. Right. Yep. And we'll paint it so you won't see those little black exactly. holders. Yep. Um but they continued the same line of conduit there and then up in here. But that'll all get painted once it's warm and dry. <laughs> so they did these lights. And I might, I'll need some, um, I may need some details on the bulbs you're putting in there. We'll have to go back and forth on which bulbs you put in. I know it calls for 60 watt. It doesn't tell me what lumens. So we'll, we may go back and forth a little bit outside of here to get it within the right lumen allowance and the warm white. I think I tried to choose one we're supposed to use. Yeah, so we'll just, sure was... yeah, and I, I don't think you gave me the info on the bulb. That info on the, on the fixture. Um, it seems as though the conduit maybe could be less visible if it were tucked up under the the cap above the window there, the blue trim that projects out, and then it wouldn't be right across the front of that um, facing piece in the window. But I don't know. I mean, the wind, the conduit on the left is already there, so maybe it would be hard to to move it up. I don't know. Have to move the whole light. Okay. Pardon me. You'd have to move the light itself up. Uh huh. Move the conduit. It's just kind of a shame that it just comes right across that trim piece and um, instead of, you know, kind of being hidden along the edge. Well, <laughs> throw the eye line, the other, I guess, is why we decided to go with the same plane as the other. We, we wanted to keep it. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I, I, I can understand that. Right, though, it would have been nice if they had done that to begin with. Put it up. Yeah. 
one other question about the the artwork um they were in the notes they were it was commenting that they would be hung with appropriate fasteners for minimal damage to the building they are also under cover is that shark supposedly under cover as well no the cut the the, uh, the deck railing the bottom deck railing is totally exposed so the but the dragon and the sorry no go ahead I said, but you wouldn't have to fasten anything to the actual you could wrap around the railing to keep it there versus versus drill into it and any no i meant the the shark in the picture is that under cover so ice doesn't come down oh the ice actually i was the ice does not come down on the railing the that deck is um further over the river than the top deck and the uh -huh. eave so the icicles actually fall onto the decking not the railing okay and then notes said that the art is undercover but the shark looks like it's out beyond the yeah that that i don't know why it says that that's that whole deck railing is exposed so but the the other two pieces will be undercover the dragon yes. and the squid yes Squid, I squid. Yeah, no, I think you're right. No, squid. that's an octopus. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I got in trouble okay. when I said squid. <laughs> really? <laughs> there are two squid on the inside. <laughs> whatever. It's, it's our. You can call it whatever you like. <laughs> Who's the artist? Who is the artist? I am. That's, that's Aaron. And the pictures are not great. This is just kind of cut out, put on. Will the dragon be we could. mounted in a way that it might spin and move? Well, you know, I was wondering about maybe wrapping the dragon on the uh, around the, uh, the metal bracing. Oh, uh huh. That that knee brace. Make it look coiled, yes, instead of actually uh, yeah. attached to the building. Yeah. Um, what we were talking to Meredith about earlier was proposing maybe um, getting permission to attach artwork on certain areas of that side of the building. Um, yeah. Anywhere um, that would make sense. The three pictures representing it right now may be all that ever goes up there, but if we did want to put something else, say under the deck, is that could we bring that picture up again? Is there yeah, a... I just I needed to simplify things because yeah, yeah. I'm signing on. No, that's <laughs> <Sorry>. fine. <laughs> uh, I think there's yeah. even a better picture of the under deck. Oh. Is this is the one you're talking about? Yeah, but there's another picture. That that's fine. Yeah. So so basically any of the wall under the top deck. So the first top the top deck. <laughs> up here. Yeah. So if you go under that that the deck there. nope nope under the the, the, the actual there. bottom of the yes there you go there you <laughs> go Watch your little space. Wait, there's a delay <clears throat> here between this and yeah that. right 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 so right so uh, yes so that yeah. wall um the wall up the stairs and then the the lower railing is really the only place that we would consider putting anything The way it appears now, the, it looks like the shark is hanging over the river. Is that correct? Yeah, so the shark would be attached to that railing and it would appear that's that's the way it would look like it's hanging off of off of the railing. And does it jut out enough to be over the river? Yes, it is over. The, it would be over the river. Hi, this is Eric. I just joined the meeting. I had trouble with Zoom. Sorry. The application is broken into two parts because of the, the first part is the art sculptures hanging from the building and the two new railings. Are they, are the railings yeah, shown in the? continued application give me a second because i might be able to pull up um a um, second mm -hmm. 
have been circulated to everybody before, but. Here's a good picture. All right, can people see this PDF? Is that showing? Yeah, so there's the railings. If you look up there. So shorter handrails here, and then the metal handrails here. I'll zoom out a little. Those are the railings, and those were um, perfectly fine with the building inspector. Um, and when we looked at it before, I don't think anybody had any issues, but we just had, we had Ben and Steve and Eric. So these are probably a little fresh for Liz and Martha. And Meredith, what is that that's on top of it? Is that the awning that's not going to be? Correct. So that awning won't be there at all? It's black. Yeah, that, that won't be there at all. Mm -hmm. That'll come off. All this part is, is so right now it's discussion of the art and these railings. And I can also get a little somewhere in here. We have that's what the shark where the shark is hanging now, right? Yes. So that's you can get a little sense of how far it sticks out from a wall, mm -hmm. how big it is. Mm -hmm. right. um, and hold on, there's the octopus now inside. I just realized, are those side handles? They are. I, I have, I'll show you why I had that many of them at another time. And that's when it occurred to me I've got enough to make eight tentacles. So, yeah. yeah. So those are side handles. Yeah. And then that's where the dragon is now. No. no. Okay. Oh. Well, you pulled it. Was. It, it, it was, was. Yeah, but 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 it's going to go. The proposing to put it on the side of the building, but that just gives you a little up close look what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, from not the old very heavy either. Yeah. All right. So it's so yeah. The application is for artwork, and then the railings that I showed you on the front for this first set of criteria. And speaking of the conduit and the so the so I had to break it out into two different criteria sheets. Yep. So we had I have pulled a different criteria sheet because lighting has its own criteria to look at. Yep. Um, and so the lighting and the menu board are gonna be another run through of criteria, if that's okay. Um, it just seemed easier than making one where some criteria applied and some didn't. It seemed yep. a little confusing otherwise. On the menu board, did you consider putting it on this, right under the bent nail sign rather than in the middle of the clapboarding? Do you, do you mean on the blue uh, trim? Exactly. Um, it may be a little large. It may that look stick out past. Yeah, and, and I'm again. It's not a. I could make it so it only sticks out on one side. It just would not be even on the uh, on the trim board if it is larger than the trim board. It is larger than the trim board. Seems to be a little. Yeah. It'd be close, It'd be, um, but yes, that's doable. It just uh, we'd rather that than say a no to it <laughs> altogether. <laughs> well, I just have some concern that this very historical building is getting very cluttered. Well, keep in mind, everything was taken down off the front, so there is nothing left on the front of the building. This, this would be the only thing, and it's strictly business related. Uh, let me think if I've got. Hold on one second. Let me go to. Let's see if I have a view of the front from the old packet. It's the side. No, I don't think I have a wide view of the front. To show you, um, but yeah, the, the front is going to have the 
windows, right? You've got the big windows and this and the lighting and this sign. Yep. And, open and, flat, right? and the lighting is over the sign. There is no lighting for this menu board. Um, no. no. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a light here that was already approved before they had their business over this window, lights on either side of the door, and then another light over here. I'm not sure they can fit too many more lights on the building and meet our max. They'd have to start taking lights off, I think. I know, but the, my point would be that if you put it under the, the bent nail sign, it would get the effect of the light without having to use another lighting fixture. Yeah, I'm sure that there would be some light thrown on that sign for sure. Had you thought yeah. of mounting? Had you thought of mounting the menu board underneath uh, to the right side of the doorway under the light that's there? I again, it's too big. It's too big. Yeah, I did ideally where it would have been nice to have. Sorry if this is making people dizzy. <laughs> uh, it's not the full. Well, I mean that would. It, it yeah, it, it might fit. It won't fit there because I I held it up. I know it won't fit there. The trim is much smaller. Well, it may be slightly wider than the the trim board here, but the casing on the outside of the door. It, it, Gives you additional width before you actually get to the doorway itself. Is it going to fit though between the railing and the light? Actually, probably not. Yeah, and that because I, I don't. This one doesn't show the railing, so I didn't know how much room. There yeah, was. this is the, here's the top of the railing, and there's a light. I don't think it's going to fit in there. And it that's could gonna fit. Back, it could go on the side of the railing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, then it would just be a matter of if there's enough room width wise to the window. I know I'm not on the committee, but isn't that thing going to make people stop in the doorway to read it and block the entry? It could be depending on how many people are going in and out. It also is not very symmetrical if you don't have something yep. on the other side, but. I don't have a problem with its current location that you're proposing, and I also believe that it would get basically the same amount of light from the light fixture above in its current location as it would if you moved it two and a half feet over to the right. Is that the height it's going to be mounted at? Uh, yeah, uh, roughly, you know, I, I level. It may not be the exact inch, uh, but head level, average head level, sure. We have to be able to get in there pretty easily to, to change the calendar, so rather not be on a ladder to do so. <laughs> yeah, a touch, touch lower probably. But. Yeah, maybe a little lower. It, it might, I would say the top of it would probably um, be, be right where the, the um, flagpole holder is on the, the blue, if you can see that. So maybe down yeah, one right. clabbered? Exactly, yeah. Probably is. How are you going to attach that um, sign? Uh, just with, with four, four wood screws on each, each uh, end of the sign, each corner. So, so you won't be damaging the clapboards at all. Other than uh, just the size of the hole of the screw. Right. Okay. Thank you. To that end, it would be um, if you can move that screw to the thicker part of the clapboard, so you're not going through the thin part of the clapboard. It'd On be the less, lower, yeah. It'd be less likely to split that sure. clapboard. And I can pre-drill yep. all that stuff. Yep. The other thing you may want to use is a small spacer just to keep it away from the clapboard so rain doesn't collect behind it and leave a lot of That's moisture. a great idea. Yeah, so just rubber. I've got some rubber uh, spacers that would work perfectly. Uh, I have a question about the um, 
hand railings, uh, are they installed already? They are. Uh, just thinking of, you know, like a, a kind of modern looking, considering the age of the building, but. Um, well, the uh, railings on the building itself are actually handicapped railings. Uh huh. That was required. I'm not sure they're required. I require because I deemed that stoop very dangerous. So, uh -huh. so I could sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> Without anything, it's not a good idea. Okay. Thank you. Do any committee members have any other comments, questions, or suggestions regarding the art sculptures and the railings? I do. This There appears to be some sort of an art sculpture over the awning. Now, I understand the awning's not going to be there anymore. Is that art sculpture still there? There's nothing for art on the front of the building anymore and, and won't be unless, you know, something changes in, in your minds that we're okay to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the awning, um, Martha, the awning w that has the art sort of built into it um, needs a building permit. Mm -hmm. and the the uh, building inspector wasn't willing to provide that without um, an engineer's okay, an outside engineer approving it. Um, so they're gonna remove that which includes the art on top of the awning. I've already taken the dragonfly off yeah. the top. That's gone. Yeah. yeah. So, so only the awning remains. Yep. And so the, and the awning will come down once the, the weather cooperates with that. Okay. If they want to put a different awning up, they'll need to work with Chris in our office again. Can I just say that in front of the, in front of the building, there are just the handrails. We'd like to have the display case and then the conduit for the lights, that's all that's on the front. Yeah, right. and the lights. No, no art, yeah, <laughs> that's on the corner. Yep. No art at all. Well, because it's a one-way street, you can't help but see it when you were approaching the building from Langdon Street anyway. The art. The, oh, yeah, the yeah. Art on the, no, on that's the right why side, it's a one-way street. So if you're going down that street. Absolutely. That's why your suggestion of it hanging on that side, it makes total sense. And that's a lot of foot traffic comes Absolutely. from that, that side too. Yeah. Um, but uh, on your comment about the art on the front of the dragonflies, this is one of those uh, reasons why I was hoping maybe we could approve more spaces on this side. I would like to hang the dragonfly again somewhere, maybe under the deck behind, say, the octopus on that wall. But, uh, you know, uh, as an artist, I get inspired and, and these, these ideas come into my head randomly. So it's hard to do this every time with those ideas. So it would just be nice to have an approval for any or all of the spaces on the side of this building that we're talking about. As new pieces come in, old pieces come off, it would just save a lot of time. Unfortunately, this is one of those things where our design regulations <laughs> probably need some work for the public art idea of potentially approving, you know, locations for similarly sized art to be switched out with similar fastenings. I, I don't know. I, I think if this is keep, somewhere where the committee has yeah. some leeway. If you keep adding too many things, then it becomes cluttered and you don't want it to look junky. I mean, individual pieces are nice and I think you could, you know, you could swap out pieces, but the, if you start adding too many more pieces, then one, one of the issues in the criteria is, is covering up architectural features of the building. And where you have the piece, the three pieces now, it's fairly reasonable. If you start adding too many more pieces, you're going to start running into covering up features of the building itself, which are important in the neighborhood. 
I, I know it'd be nice to do that and I understand why you want to do it, but I don't see how we can do, we can approve something that we don't really know what it is. We've always, you know, been pretty sure about what things are going to turn out to be. Yeah, my, my only comment on that is, <laughs> and the, the picture is small, but uh, right now you're looking at garbage cans and propane tanks. Um, <laughs> so I uh, just, I just would like anything to take your eye away from that in my mind would, would be a good thing. Um, but you know, we get used to looking at things and we, we forget that it's actually an eyesore already. F f figure out some creative thing to do with the garbage can, with the propane tanks. Well, that's why I'd like to hang things on that railing, Eric, because that shark is actually much bigger than the picture looks like, and I would like it to be back further to actually hide most of the propane tanks. You wouldn't even see that. With the I, I think that would be great, because the, the shark does look small on the, uh, on the, in this uh, rendering. Yes. I think putting it down, uh, on the right in there, yep, right where Meredith is pointing would be fine. Where I thought it would go. I, that's I, I wasn't in touch with our graphic designer. She did this for us quickly, and yeah, that's where I was imagining it going. We can we can give you a choice on that one. I would think. Great. Now, what about anything un, under the deck, over the? propane tanks and the garbage cans. So in, in addition to the octopus, you mean? So the octopus is actually hanging from the upper deck, not on the walls. So the right. wall space under the deck is, is still also there. I just think it would be hard maybe to see it if you have the octopus and the shark right there. Well, again, and they're not exactly where I would hang them. I'm pretty good at, at space, um, you know, making the space for pieces. And my my artwork is very colorful, some of it. So it would uh -huh. be in the daytime for sure, not so much. Yeah. I don't know if there's room underneath the bottom, you know, the, the first floor deck hanging over the river. For example, the dragonfly that already been I would probably put my wall in there. That's that's what I'm thinking would go specifically. Yes. Yeah, so that piece I could attach to the wall itself. So like the feet up against yep. the wall? Yep, so it would be flat against the wall, like a like a fly on a wall kind of thing. Yes, exactly. Would that not crowd it too much by having the shark, the octopus, and the dragonfly crammed into that one space? Well, again, if you can imagine the shark all the way to the end of the deck hiding the propane tanks, mm -hmm. the octopus is actually going to be turned the other way around, and it, and it could also be put further um, to the end of the deck. Mm -hmm. And then the dragonfly could actually live in the first, yep, right there, the first square. The no. dragonfly might look really nice um, where you have the uh, dragon <laughs> on the wall. Absolutely, and that's what I mean. So you can interchange certain pieces and put the dragon down below because the dragon is also very shiny and colorful. And it, you would look at that before you looked at the garbage cans that it sits above. <laughs> that's what I mean. I would just like to be able to interchange pieces, new pieces with old. If you approve certain areas, that would be the best case scenario for us. So sort of like a sign plan, but for art. So they have the same general sizes and locations. I, but we also we don't really we don't have that in there, so it's kind of what the committee. The only is issue would with. be, they could. I'm not sure if there's a way they could get administrative approval for something they wanted to swap out that we haven't seen yet. Or yeah, I mean that's the with the with the the needing to look how things are fastened. I don't, I don't know. Well, what they, <laughs> what they are, how they're fastened. I mean, there are a lot of, and again, a lot of it has to do with the criteria. 
uh, it, you know, there's a lot of compatibility issues with the neighborhood and, and adjacent properties and and again, I, it's hard to get blanket approval for just putting up anything. I mean, even the artwork that's, even though it's temporary, the artwork that's gone on the buildings has come for approval. Well, Stephen, uh, so just a blanket. We have this art article that just came out. Art culture is an integral part of Montpelier's identity. From signs, murals to sculptures, art intertwines with Montpelier's historical architecture. Um, so I hear what you're saying, but there are already, people are already trying to tie the two together and make this work for Montpelier. And so there's already precedent set. I mean, you know, we've got Charlie O's building with the giant metal thing sticking out. What, you know, again, it's all relative. People, there's certain people that think that's beautiful. And that's, that's great. But um, there is what I'm saying, precedence and an argument to that. Yes, so. and, and but it's not necessarily a blanket that you can hang anything you want without sure. coming yeah, for yeah. approval. Well, that's, and that's what I'm absolutely. saying. If you want to, if you want approval to, to mount those four pieces in a balanced basis on that side of the building that does, that doesn't cover architectural features, that's fine. But I don't think we can give blanket approval for anything you decide to come up with that you want to hang up. Yeah, and, and that's. And I, I agree, completely agree with you, Steve. Understand Montpelier is, is doing a, a lot of art things, but we've been very careful about where they're placed on the building so they don't interfere with the interpretation of the building. <clears throat> I think one could argue that that's what's happening here, that by sort of keeping all the art on one side of the building away from the front of the building and away from Elm Street and taking this facade and saying, okay, this is truthfully a, a pretty ugly part of this building and make, making an effort to sort of say, okay, great. This is a spot to be able to put up that art feels like a similar argument that we are saying, okay, we've left all the other pieces of this building that are historical and important alone but we're saying this is a spot that can be actually made more attractive and better than not looking at the propane tanks looking at the garbage cans or looking at the compressors for the heat pumps that like sure there's there's some spaces for this so i guess i see it as we are maintaining that sort of control over where this art is being placed while also giving some flexibility to the artist who is trying to do his best with a nice building and trying to sort of meet our codes. So that's, I see that argument a different way. Yeah, I, I really, I really appreciate uh, moving the art, the proposal to move the art around to this side of the building. I, I think that's a, th that works really well. Right. And, and I think, you know, we have art. <clears throat> along uh, on the riverside of buildings in Montpelier. So I think it really ties in with that, the existing art that we have right now. On the other side of the bridge, there are those cables across with little flags on them. Right, right. And out of the cross the river, there's that uh, springy fingers device that sit, hangs out over the river. I don't know how to what to call it. Yeah, I think that's fine. Three fingers, I think that is the, the name of it. And again, we don't have any issue with, you know, changing some stuff out, but again, if there is a way that we can condition it on administrative approval rather than to going through another whole process to, you know, change the art out, uh, is that a possibility? Um, I think that's, if, if that's, I think the committee can put that in as a condition. Yeah. Okay. But that, that they're okay with. I think that's great. Uh, a, a great way to handle it. Okay. Yeah. That that it's it can it's with administrative uh, authorizing administrative review of switching out. So it'd still be an administrative permit, right? Administrative design review. If you're putting switching out art pieces in the same general space, general size, 
right? Same, similar, similar attachment. Yes. So again, we we give approve the addition of the of the and whatever arrangement you want to make of the four pieces you have now, including the dragonfly. Again, so that it doesn't cover up architectural features. Uh, clapboards and the the lower railing are fine, but again, not covering up like window trim or corner boards. Maybe or, we could identify what we consider the architectural features on this side, such as the window trim and the corner board. It's basically everything but the clapboards. And of course, architectural features, the, the poles the, that are angled up that support the upper deck wouldn't be considered a historical architectural no. feature. So again, you're just not covering up window trim, corner boards, window trim, door trim, corner boards, but placing it like the like the uh, dragon here. It's just there's clapboards behind it. But again, if you, depending on how that's mounted, if it's spaced off the wall, I mean, as you go by it, you see the clapboards behind it anyway. So I uh, pertaining to that specifically, I could also spiral that dragging around one of those metal supports sure. to not even be an issue that would look very look very great. cool in my my yeah. opinion also but again that's either under the deck or uh, and again that could be one. spiral around one of the the metal support supports. posts but not yeah. not one of the corner right posts no, on the metal pieces on the deck itself yeah. yes and again the idea is to have the art there so that people see it and again, hiding some of the utility stuff, but not, again, not covering up any of the historical architectural components. Absolutely. I think that's doable. And if, you know, whether it's me or some other zoning administrator is like, ah, I don't know. If then they're not comfortable with it, then it would come back to DRC for specific items. But So I, I, okay? just to be clear, are we talking about the whole side of the building that is not architectural any of the clapboard areas is pretty much up for grabs okay i just want to i think be up very to clear. up to four pieces is that what you guys are talking about yes or, yeah up to four pieces okay in other words we don't want to see 12 pieces there. i mean you're covering up the whole side of the building the idea sure. is to have some art that you notice and complements the building rather than the tracks from the okay building. that's fair sure okay i think that's doable well, can if you trade it out with the shirt. Yeah, right. so, yeah, yeah. Any other comments, questions, or suggestions regarding the sculptures uh, and the railings? I see no hands. Okay. So I have to go through the criteria sheet. Number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. Uh, the removal of historic materials or alteration of features and spaces that characterize as an historic property shall be avoided. Character defining features, finishes, construction techniques, or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Uh, there are no deteriorated features for this so we can skip the rest of that. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited to chemical or physical treatments, such as sandblasting, shall not be approved. So the railings and the artwork, given the other conditions that we talked about, are acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. Acceptable. Alterations to buildings called for by public safety, accessibility, and fire codes shall be designed to maintain the character of the construction materials and features to the maximum extent feasible, acceptable. Our 
architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in any alteration of a building. And again, with the placement, as we discussed, of the art so it doesn't cover any of the features other than the clapboards is acceptable. Wait. Aren't they, they're allowed to cover the railings? No. The, the lower railing. The, Just the lower the railing. Lower, the lower railing with the shark attached so that it's on the outside of the railing. Yep. And again, back behind, it's a trade-off in the in the back side covering the uh, the tanks. <laughs> it's a good it's a good trade-off. Yeah. So again, the approval is for the four pieces, current pieces of artwork. Uh, and again, in locations that don't cover character defining details of the building other than the clapboards. And again, the railing for the shark in the back. And any changes, and again, would be subject to administrative approval. You don't have to go through this whole, whole process okay. again. I was gonna ask you what the difference is. I'm not exactly sure yeah. what that means. So it would be a, just a permit downstairs. Yeah. We would just say, yep, you need to, design review you just covering. send you a picture just bring a picture in and show up downstairs and find <laughs> meredith and okay. <laughs> okay. as long as it's not too over the <laughs> top you're fine it's all pretty similar right i mean i i don't i do have some much bigger pieces but i would never try to again what I'm was very, i going to say a 12 foot a 12 foot elephant might not fit anywhere <laughs> there <laughs> Yeah, I have a 14 foot boat. aluminum boat that actually stands up and it, it's the, it looks like a giant penguin. <laughs> so that, that I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't try something. I promise. <laughs> Only things that make sense. And based on those conditions, do I hear a vote from the members? All in favor, say, speak your names. Ben. Liz. This is Martha. Um, I'm a hesitant okay. What did she say? <laughs> She's a hesitant okay. Is Eric still there? Yeah. Eric, what do you say on the art and the railing? You're muted, Eric. Uh, one, one thing, uh, I think the it came up just in the conversation about the scale and size ought to be put in whatever can the administrative approval part. Okay. Now that we can add that. Yep. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm good with it. I think. Okay. And I say yes as well, again, with, you know, with the conditions for any change out of, it, of the, of the pieces other than the four that are currently on board. So that portion is approved. And we can go on to the second portion of the application which is for the lights and the menu board. Does anyone have any comments, questions, or suggestions before we go through the criteria, criteria there? Well, I would still rather see the menu board on the, the side um, trim on the blue part of the painted area. So on the corner board? Yeah. I would prefer that, but I'm good either way if it doesn't fit on the corner board. We can give them the option of putting it in either place unless there's a strong feeling about one place or the other. 
My only feeling is I don't want it to over overhang the corner board. If it's too big for the corner board, I think it's going to look kind of funny. Otherwise, I'm totally fine with it on the corner board. Is the sign board already made? It was purchased. It's a, it's a glass front aluminum frame. Oh, okay. Purchased, yeah. I didn't get artistic with that, if that's what you mean. That was, a, <laughs> that was just a buy. Yeah. I don't know. I think it looks kind of crowded on the corner board myself. Um, I don't mind it on the clavards as long as it doesn't do any damage to the clavards other than the screw holes. Actually, the color of the uh, the frame around it is more compatible with the clapboards than it is the corner board. Anyway, that was intentional. Thought it would blend in better there. The height of it, you probably should mount it so that, like you said, probably about a five foot height to the center. That's that's a fairly standard for readability. So five feet is would be somewhere right in here. That's all we which need. Is five, six, just to give you an idea of the picture. But it's, it's also readable for somebody who's six four, right. <laughs> two. So that that's a standard closet height, you know, for a closet ride, five right. feet. So sure. from the you you don't want you don't center. want somebody you don't want somebody too. Sh too short if it's high. You don't want somebody who's too short straining to <laughs> to read it. See, five feet from the ground. Yep. To the center. center. And again, that's that's just a ballpark. It doesn't have to be exact. Okay. Any other comments regarding the lights and the new menu board? I'm sad about the conduit, but I don't believe that. I believe it predated their uh, moves, and I don't know what else to do about it. I, I'm not clear about the dates of the conduit. Is, is there anything clear about when the conduit for the lights over the uh, windows was installed? In the other stretch of it that goes up the side of the building, Goes across and up the corner board. That's new. Yep. So the from the because you missed that part of the discussion, Eric. Um, yeah. Uh, hold on one second. I'll do a quick. Got time? Cause there's nothing else. Uh, oh, wrong way. So this is existing old conduit. Stretches across and goes to this light. And these lights were already installed by the, the prior business owner. Um, and maybe even before Sweet Melissa's. Um, it's not 100% clear from the permit record. Um, and then this conduit was just added by the applicants at the same, so trying to continue the same line of the old stuff, and they'll be painting this all to match what's behind it um, once it gets warm enough again. I, 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 I think the whole conduit installation is poor, but I don't have any problems with the addition. Yep, I think that's where Ben was at too. And I, I am happy to come up with something much more aesthetically pleasing to the eye, artistically, if, if you'd rather. <laughs> I, I'm sure I can do a better job uh, than, than just conduit. But that would be something, again, artistic on the front of the building. So you'd have to uh, decide what you'd rather look at, I guess. A whole line of snakes, that would work. <laughs> it doesn't have to be, it doesn't even have to be animal related, Eric. It, it could simply be abstract or what, whatever. Well, I could, it, it, I could it, look it, like a ribbon blowing in the wind. I could, I could make something really, really nice that doesn't really have any animal uh, attachments. So that, that's an option, for sure. Well, I don't know how, how happy they will be with this. The thing to remember also is that painting an already painted surface doesn't come through design review. 
So you can oh, always play with that get, idea. They're going to get painted. Yeah. I'm just not sure paint alone I, it would, would, would cover what you no, are you'd, unhappy you'd about. You work it into something else uh, yeah, on the building. Saying, but, but, yeah. but then you've already got everything painted. Yeah. So in a way to. And they will blend in much better. It will blend much better. Well, not, not the new part so much, but the old part is just a sloppy installation to begin with. Yeah, it's even worse. Right. Yeah. This at least is straight. <laughs> well, I, you need a nice bend there, and the bend of, from the light to uh, up above from the, right in there is just like you had an extension cord or something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think they should have tucked it underneath the, the window hood there, the painted hood. Um, I, I, what about this? Yeah. It should give me an idea. What if I make it look like vines? I could paint <laughs> vinery and flowers, uh, make it look like a, just a, it's supposed to be like that, Eric, you know, kind of <laughs> like a vine. It doesn't have right form. <laughs> Blooming flowers, and vines, and leaves. Give it, Give it some thought. Let me know. <laughs> I think any anything you add to it is going to make it look <laughs> even more obtrusive. Okay, well, I that's mean, fine. You know, I agree with Steve. Yeah, we make it even more obvious. Okay, well, that's, that's in, fine. Too. I mean, in new construction or or in a renovation, a, a thorough renovation, all that wiring would have been inside the walls, the exterior walls, and then you would have drilled through just for the box and the cover for the light, and the, there wouldn't have been any of that showing, but. You you were dealt a hand that was already there. <laughs> In a building you don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think at this point, I think just painting it, I mean, you, you certainly notice the conduit when you get up close and looking at it at this angle. Paint it and from a distance it might fade away. Yeah, on the other bit. side of the road, it's a little yeah. harder to even notice when it's painted. Again, any other comments since there's not much we can do about the existing, pre-existing conduit? No. Okay, and again, a lot of it has to do with the fact that you inherited some of the installation. Exterior, number one again, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic materials, that's not applicable. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. And again, no deteriorated features. Any treatments that cause damage to historic materials, including but not limited chemical or physical treatments, such as sandblasting, are not approved. Uh, it, the application for the lighting and the menu board are acceptable. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a phys physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old, but shall respect and be compatible with the massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties. Again, acceptable. Architectural features, including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, entablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in the alteration of a building. That's acceptable. Outdoor lighting fixtures. The structural design of outdoor lighting fixtures shall be compatible with the architectural design and function of the building and compatible with the neighborhood, acceptable. All in favor of the applications, speak your names. When I say something, Steve, I think there ought to be a note that the reason we're accepting that conduit is because it was of the prior installation. And we certainly don't want to match that workmanship. <laughs> yes. I I think that's that was critical in my 
uh, you know, if the current applicant had put all that up, I would be voting no. We wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> He's writing now. <laughs> what I'm thinking about when I make suggestions like this is precedent. Yep. If somebody comes in and they, well, they put that stuff on the outside of the building. You know, that got a permit. Uh, I, think I don't, I don't want to see any more of it. And we've already seen that in other circumstances. Before we get too far away from it on, on the menu board, I'm persuaded by the argument that it would blend more to be near the clapboards because of the color of the frame. That is a persuasive point. Okay, and so again- I can, So I can see it on the clapboarding area. We can, we can just, I mean, accept that with the current application, which is for the proposed location. Yeah. Have to make any, I mean, we just. Hey, That's fine with me. Seems to be the preferred location, again, based on compatibility of the term. Well, it's one, one of the things about this, uh, the sculpture and the menu board are easily reversible. Yes. So that uh, if somebody wants to put it back the way it was, that's fine. It's easy. And Ann, we said the acceptance of the conduit for the electrical lighting is based on the fact that there's precedent due to the existing conduit, which has been in place for years before the current addition of the new lights. Very good. Thank you, Steve. So again, everybody in favor, speak your names. Ben. Martha. Liz. And Steve. So it's approved. And I need to finish writing that one up, but okay. they can sign that okay. if you like. Yep, so we'll get your signatures on these. Uh, Do you have a pen? Yep. One, okay. One, yeah. um, and Steve's going to be writing about how your options for how to change the proper. Okay. About. You can put a little more in it um, when you get your problems. Okay. And again, it's basically, I was going to say that it's proof of the four current pieces spaced on the building. So again, so it doesn't cover, according to the criteria, it doesn't cover any of the architectural features. And then again, any changes uh, can be administratively approved just by that's, walking uh, into the office with a picture and that's great. Pro proposed locations. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Well, That's it. We can be excused. You can be excused. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming back. Absolutely. Yeah, and making the changes, I think it'll... I apologize for last time I was uh, under the COVID cloud, so I wasn't feeling so well. And, uh, so thank you for allowing me to do this again. Thank, thank you, you for coming back. And, and good luck with your projects as spring weather comes around and hopefully things get busy again. Well, the last couple of weeks, uh, business has been better, so I think it's yeah. Okay.
<laughs> now, is there still the exterior glass? There is. I left them in for the insulated, insulating uh, property. Oh, okay. So I was wondering. So now I would actually like to try to take them out and store them somewhere so we can put them back and store them in the future. Uh, that might be a problem. I think that's probably about 350 pounds each. <laughs> you guys aren't doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have the suction cups to hold on to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. Has anybody had a chance to look at the meeting minutes from February 22nd? Yeah. Um, I'll make a motion to accept them the way they are. <laughs> Liz. Was that a second? Yes, Liz. Okay. <laughs> All in favor of the minutes, speak your names. Martha. Liz. Liz. Ben. Eric abstains because he wasn't there. And Steve, so the minutes are approved by four votes. Does anyone have anything else to add at this point? No. Then do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. There. <laughs> and I'll second it. This is Martha. Okay. All in favor, speak your names. Eric. Martha. Liz. Ben. And Steve. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>